what's inside. Now, more than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Christian Morales, Vice President of the Sales and Marketing Group and General Manager of Europe, Middle East and Africa of Intel Corporation to the stage. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to be back here at IFA 2013. And I want to welcome, welcome you and thank you for being with us this afternoon. We are going to be uh, talking about experiences, we're going to be talking about new architectures, and new micro architectures, and new products that are going to be introduced, are being introduced, or will be introduced in the very first uh, coming future. So, three uh, topics I will uh, be covering. One is on Intel and as a company, where uh, do we stand? What are the assets we have? What are we doing uh, for the transformation that is going on in the world of devices today and the world of experiences? Uh, people and what is it uh, that we are doing in terms of innovation, creativity, what is the DNA that we have, and products, uh, a lot of products and demonstrations that we are going to be uh, showing you in, um, and what we can do with the technologies we are announcing uh, in the next um, uh, part of the session. So first, looking uh, into Intel and uh, what we do, uh, it's very important that we mention what is our vision. And our vision is to bring solutions and technologies uh, to reach all the citizens uh, in the world. And uh, in this region, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, which, uh, uh, in which we work, it's 2.2 uh, billion people that we have, and we are bringing solutions, technologies, um, experiences, uh, be it to be better connected to the internet, be it to better develop rich content, better communicate, and exchange this uh, rich content or other experiences you are going to be uh, seeing that we can achieve with, um, uh, you know, through this, uh, this vision. And um, important to mention some of the assets that uh, are needed to get so much transformation, innovation, and creativity, and also scale and uh, capabilities to, man to manufacture so many products, uh, at least in the volumes that are needed to meet the expectations uh, in the world. And um, just want to mention here what we do in research and development, which is uh, a very important uh, part of our activity and a key focus in, uh, that is in the DNA of the company with over $10 billion of investment that we have done this year, for example. Another 10, uh, 11 billion that we're investing in new technologies and the production capacity uh, to be able to meet the demand and ramp the new technologies as fast as the world um, needs them. <coughs> Talk about, uh, we also have a very important activity going through uh, Intel Capital. We have invested in over a thousand companies in the last uh, 20 years or so. And um, uh, we are investing in companies that bring innovation, bring new technologies. We do the technology coaching and, uh, and we work together as an ecosystem to uh, keep on innovating and bringing new solutions to the marketplace. And we have in the factory the 22 nano, nanometer technologies where we have been now in production for some time and uh, working in introducing the next generation which is the 14 nanometers technology. And a lot of other assets here that are very important uh, to keep on innovating and to keep on bringing great experiences to the marketplace. If we look at uh, what is important in terms of people and how we work, it's very important that we keep on creating, it's very important that we keep on innovating and there is certainly a DNA we have in the company which is about uh, going off and keeping on doing wonderful things uh, and um, talking about wonderful things and what we can do with those technologies there is certainly an experience here that uh, I would like uh, uh, to be sharing with you and um, for this I would like to welcome Ben Sanders here uh, on, uh, on stage and uh, 
Ben, I have a picture of you here, but I'm not sure I will have recognized you. Um, and uh, Ben, thank uh, you, Christian. Yeah, my, a, uh, I know you use a lot of technology. I, you do extreme sports. So can you tell us uh, a bit more of, uh, of your experience and, I, and what you I can indeed. Yeah, I guess uh, my idea of wonderful is a little bit colder than uh, most people's. Um, I am a polar explorer. Uh, I've been leading polar expeditions professionally for the last 12 years. Uh, I skied solo to the North Pole in 2004. I've covered over uh, 4,000 kilometers on foot, uh, some that on my own, in the very high Arctic. Um, I've broken a few records along the way. And uh, later on this year, I'm embarking on the biggest uh, and most ambitious expedition of my uh, career to date. It's a project called the Scott Expedition. Uh, it is named after a British explorer called Captain Scott, who actually died in Antarctica in 1912, trying to become the first person to reach the South Pole. Uh, he was traveling on foot, and he was beaten to it by a Norwegian team that used dogs, uh, led by Roald Amundsen. Uh, Amundsen reached the pole and became the first to, to claim that place for Norway, but Scott's team of five died on the way back in 1912, and that journey has never been repeated. No one's ever walked from the coast of Antarctica to the South Pole and back to the coast again. So that, to me, seemed like uh, an interesting challenge. It's taken about uh, 10 years to get to this point. We are in the starting blocks, uh, about to leave. And uh, it's a journey that, that is all about challenge, really. Um, you can follow it. I think, uh, I think the next slide has the URL, uh, scottexpedition.com. Uh, are, what are one of the biggest challenges, as well as obviously surviving in these places. Uh, we're spending, I'm leading a team of two. Uh, we're heading off in October. We're there for uh, nearly four months in Antarctica. The average temperature will be about minus 35 degrees centigrade. So as well as surviving this place and covering 2,900 kilometers on foot there and back, the biggest challenge has been figuring out how to share this story and how to communicate it in as much depth and as much detail with as big an audience as we can. Uh, my very first expedition, 2001, we had a film camera and we had radio, so we had almost no communication with the outside world. Uh, since then, satellite phones now work uh, over the North and South Poles, and I have been dreaming for many years of something that was a bit like a laptop, but smaller, more powerful, with longer battery life, uh, and something that, that uh, you know, that I could take in my sledge and, and, and feel that uh, would help me communicate with the, the outside world. And um, I was saying to Kristen just now, it, it is almost like these, uh, the, these Ultrabooks have been des designed for this project. Um, this is one of the actual Ultrabooks we are taking with us. Uh, we're taking two in Antarctica to our sledges. They are the, the only way that we are sharing this story with the outside world, via satellite phone. There's obviously no audience in Antarctica. There is no one there to see this journey. So if anyone is going to hear about this story and experience it, it all happens, all the story storytelling happens through this Ultrabook. Um, so that's how we're doing it. Um, and um, it's really only thanks to this fourth generation technology, the fact that we can edit video in the tent, we can upload it overnight via satellite phone, that we can uh, tell the story in, in as much detail as we can. So it's Scott Expedition. Uh, all the social media, Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of stuff is, is Scott Expedition as well. So you can follow along. We are leaving, uh, Christian, in, in just over four weeks' time. So things are very busy, people. Thank you for... Uh, hey, Ben. Sure. That's really great. And uh, we wish you a great adventure there. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back to tell us how it went and share your experience. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Ben. Thank you. Wonderful come also from inside and uh, all the products and the solutions that are brought to the, to the marketplace. And uh, we have seen... Uh, a variety of products coming coming onto the marketplace in the last uh, you know 12 18 months that uh, are very breakthrough products and the world is transforming very fast and users are demanding much better experiences and new devices and new markets are being created uh, to address uh, these needs and i want to mention here four in my view four major uh, pillars of transformation that are taking place uh, in, uh, in the world right now. One is on the devices, which is where we are um, uh, focusing the most today. The other one is on big data, the other one is on the Internet of Things, and the other one is on security. Devices, because there is a proliferation <coughs> of devices in the marketplace, people not only have one, but multi devices, they want to be interconnected, and uh, we're going to see uh, yet many more devices coming up in the, in the near future. Then all those devices are generating a lot of data, all the analysis that is needed um, to get the best out of big data is absolutely key so that you can take advantage of this big data and this uh, uh, has to do with the analytics and the capacity to analyze the data that you need to have and what to do with those data 
And if you use, for, you use, for example, technologies like Hadoop, you're going to be able to uh, go through you know, tens or hundreds of gigabytes of uh, information in uh, today less than 10 minutes versus over five, hour, five hours if you wouldn't use those kind of technologies. And this is going to be big insight both for business but also for consumers. If you are in a retail store and you have a person helping you to make the best choice for a device or a solution you want to acquire, uh, the fact that this person will have an interactive device uh, with him or her is going to help you make a much better decision and is going to help you also to go faster through uh, kind of the transaction and the interaction you want to, uh, to have in that store. So all of this big data is going to have a tremendous impact on, on those experiences. And then Internet of Things, just bear one number in mind, which is in 2015, expecting that 15 billion devices or um, devices will be connected to the internet. And uh, then all of this goes obviously with security because you want to have peace of mind and you have to have your uh, data and what you care uh, most for have to be absolutely protected. So if we look at uh, how uh, in the last 30 years uh, the PC has evolved, which has been a tremendous transformation. And you see here all the social interactions with the devices, the only ones, the enthusiast segment, um, all those, um, you know, all the ultra books and the new devices that were introduced and the new experiences that were brought to the marketplace. Uh, this has been a tremendous transformation that uh, took place. And uh, together we provide a, a, a wide variety of products and solutions uh, uh, to this marketplace. And uh, there is a very important change in the way we design products now. Until recently, we will just produce and bring great architectures and uh, solutions based on silicon to uh, the marketplace. Then the ecosystem will uh, design and work around it with the systems and solutions. And then the users will have the experiences uh, as a consequence. Now we look at what users really want to have in terms of experience. From there, we work with the ecosystem, and then we produce and come up with the best silicon so that they can, we can meet the expectations the users will, have, uh, will want to have in terms of experiences. And if you look until recently, the interface with the device was mostly the keyboard and the mouse, then touch, and uh, now there is a need and a request from the users to have a much more natural interface and interaction with the devices. And to talk about this, uh, I'd like to, uh, to um, uh, call uh, Paul here on stage uh, to show us what are some of the experiences that are more natural that users will be able to experience going forward. Paul, great to have you here. Thank you, Christian. Um, I want to talk to you about perceptual technology. Uh, perceptual technology enables our devices to understand us more naturally as humans. So they can now work around us rather than us having to work around them and learn how to use them. Uh, the, our devices have had brains for forever, the CPU, and for about a year we've had touch screens and sensors which you can liken to um, nerves if you like. What we're doing now is introducing with 4th gen core uh, ears to the system through a dual array microphone which is integrated into the design. And that enables it to understand our speech. Also, with this device here, Creative Sense 3D, you can see there are, are two lenses. So it's like having eyes, and that enables it to detect movement and distance. And there's lots of different applications of that. But why don't I show you some of this perception yeah, technology? Okay, here, actually, can I have the, this system on the screen? So what you can see here is a, a standard Windows login, <coughs> and it's asking for a password. But because it knows me and my face, it authenticates me and lets me in. Did you see how fast that was? Uh, very fast. So uh, regardless so, of the mood, you're going to be able to <coughs> Exactly. And, you know, over time, if I'm growing beard or wearing glasses, changing my hair color, then it learns me as well. So. It's, 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 it's so you don't have fast. to type a password anymore. Exactly, and another added convenience factor to it is that when you're on the web, you've got lots of different sites, lots of different passwords, you might not always remember them. So with this, you've got the convenience of it actually populating your password fields, letting you into your Facebook, Gmail, whatever it is, 
without even having to type in the password. So it solves the memory issues we could have, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, the second demo I'd like to show you is actually this system here. This is a, a fourth gen core Ultrabook from Dell. And as I mentioned, it's got ears. And so when you and I communicate with each other, we can filter out the background noise. And if I'm not talking <laughs> clearly to you, or if it's a, a bad connection on the phone or whatever, then the context of the situation helps us to understand each other easily anyway. And that's actually very hard for computers to do. It's a problem that we've been solving for a while. But we've come a long way, so let me show you. Hello, Dragon. Sorry, I haven't loaded Dragon. <laughs> um, I tell you what, while, while Dragon is loading, let's be efficient with time. I want to show you something which is very interesting about the camera. It's got two eyes. So I want to draw your attention to a game. As I said, there's lots of different usages of depth te technology. But games have been in 3D for more than 15 years. And yet the keyboard and the mouse, they don't map naturally to three dimensions. Our hands, on the other hand, we can move them freely. So it's very nice to be able to use your hands as a controller. Let me show you. You can see that my hand is now mapped to the cube. And as I move forward, backwards, left, right, up, down, it also maps. And I can actually also rotate the cube with my hand like this. And it means that I can actually enjoy the game more naturally, solve the puzzles in a more natural way. So, very nice uh, addition to 3D gaming. Very nice, you know, natural interface. Absolutely. I think, I think Dragon's now loaded, if I, if I may. So let's see, let's see if uh, is the device really, you know, uh, responds to you. Hello, Dragon. Do I have the levels going in? The microphone? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll leave that one, unfortunately. But there is one more thing I want to show you. And that is, um, I don't know if you knew this, but every time our heart beats, our skin changes color. We can't see it, but the perceptual technology can see it. And that means it can give us a pulse reading. From the pulse reading, we can take that biometric information and we can determine things like stress levels, uh, excitement, mood, and you know, even some health and wellness applications. So I'll show you this in action. As you can see, very excited to be here on the stage. <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, I'm sure the dragon is asleep right now, but when he wakes up, it's uh, going to Yeah, I'd be happy to show people after. Very good. Thank you, Paul. Really Thank appreciate you. it. So, I wanted to show here this uh, creative uh, 3D camera, which is um, available now. It's getting available and, uh, and can be now um, purchased online. And this is a real breakthrough in terms of technology, because until now you could do waving and uh, you will have kind of a 2D recognition from the devices, but now you have all 3D um, you know, experiences you can have, which is a natural way of uh, interacting uh, for human beings, but was not a, a natural way of interacting with devices. Now you can also do it because the devices uh, will, uh, will recognize it. So that's really a great breakthrough from the technology standpoint. The um, people like to be mobile, they like to be connected uh, all the time to the uh, you know to the internet they like to be uh, connected to uh, to their friends they like to be connected to their home and uh, they like to be interactive uh, when uh, they use uh, the devices and uh, we can see here that the uh, uh, the amount of interactivity uh, interaction going on with the devices uh, keeps on growing uh, people want to have a great experience and they want to have an instant capability to communicate around the world which is uh, which is very important and uh, we can see here uh, a lot of devices that uh, are available wherever, are available around the world with uh, some of those uh, great experiences, with great products are shipping. And uh, one thing I wanted to add is the connectivity is, um, is one where we uh, need to keep on innovating and bringing new solutions to the marketplace. For example, the business issue is the band fragmentation today. If you look at what's going on on 3G and LTE, 
and uh, also um, the need for more uh, choice and more solutions available in the marketplace. And we are very pleased today, uh, as Intel, to be announcing a new solution here. And the approach we have had is to integrate the highest number of bands available in a single LTE uh, 15 bands uh, solution. And this is uh, the first uh, uh, one part solution that gets the 15 uh, uh, bands into this single LTE uh, transceiver. And uh, by minimizing this um, um, component count, we are able to minimize the cost and obviously optimize the performance and have a much better uh, battery life and uh, energy efficiency capability. And this is the XMM7116 uh, solution uh, that we'll bring to the marketplace. And it's a uh, multi-mode, multi-band, 4G connectivity. And uh, we uh, see this as a world's smallest, smallest and lowest power multi-band multi solution for IT. So that's really a breakthrough. And uh, it has been announced already that uh, leading edge tablets are going to be available on the marketplace in the first quarter. And we're going to see more products being, uh, coming up, uh, um, integrating this product, which is very, very thin, uh, consumes uh, very little power, and allows you to have a great connectivity um, experience. So that's really a breakthrough from um, an LTE 4G a solution standpoint. Those devices are on the marketplace today when uh, we look at uh, um, you know, um, all the different uh, look and feels and um, kind of devices, be it tablets, uh, two-in-ones that exist on the marketplace. And um, there is much more coming up and today we want to be announcing a great new micro-architecture which is um, the Bay Trail based on the Silvermont um, architecture, we call it, which is a very, very uh, small device here, very thin and light, as, as you can see. And uh, it's based on the 22 nanometer technology. And it's uh, a product we're going to be announcing into details uh, next week at IDF in San Francisco. And just a couple of uh, words I want to give on this uh, product. It's uh, twice the performance of the previous generation products that you have just seen on the screen, on the tablet that are in the marketplace today. It's an all-day battery life, meaning over eight hours, so that you can really have a great day of experience. It's a great improvement from a 3D graphics standpoint, and uh, media capabilities, and full uh, high definition, and this is because it, uh, it includes the generation seven uh, graphics um, that uh, we have been able to, uh, to put into it. And uh, I want to show here two devices that are now available on uh, for uh, with those solutions. One is uh, <coughs> one is an Android-based solution, and the other one is a, is a Windows 8-based solution here. And those uh, one of them was announced this morning, and the others are also uh, now getting available. And um, this is uh, devices based on this new generation of microarchitectures. And those microarchitectures, you're going to be seeing them from data centers in vehicle entertainment, a lot of uh, Internet of Things uh, devices connected to the Internet, and obviously on, uh, on tablets. And uh, in the near future, we're going to see them on smartphones. So great breakthrough from a technology standpoint here that will bring great experiences to the marketplace. Two-in-one devices, um, people like to have the extreme mobility, virtual mobility of tablets, but they want to have the level of performance that the notebooks bring them, that the ultrabooks uh, bring them. And last year, remember, here in IFA, we were announcing a lot of new ultrabooks. This year, we're going to be, we are announcing here a lot of two-in-one devices, new generation ultrabooks. And um, what is interesting here is that from phones, tablets, and notebooks, there are new categories of devices that have been introduced in the marketplace, like the phablets, like the two-in-ones, which are part of the Ultrabooks uh, flagship innovation products, that, uh, which is an initiative we, we launched uh, over two years ago. And um, we're going to go now into much more detail into what we can do with those two-in-ones, what they are about, what the new fourth generation core um, uh, Ultrabooks are about. And for this, I'm going to be um, asking Adam to join me here on stage. He's a director of notebook marketing for the PC client group, group. And Adam, please join me on stage and uh, you know show us what we can do with all those uh, great uh, uh, technologies. Great, thank you, Thanks so much. Thank you. Good job. 
As, as Christian said, the mobile device landscape is really evolving quite rapidly with many categories and subcategories, lots of innovation and experimentation in the market. And I would like to spend the next half an hour talking to you about two-in-ones, which we believe is one of the newest and most exciting categories in this space. So let me talk more about what the two-in-one really is. The two-in-one is really about bringing what you love about your tablet and what you love about your notebook PC into one device. The consumption usages that are associated with smartphones and tablets are becoming ever more immersive and demanding more performance. At the same time, the productivity and creation usages that are associated with notebooks and desktops are becoming integrated into ever more mobile devices. And what this creates is a sweet spot, a place where the two-in-one, a device that brings together consumption and creation into one, can thrive. And our product strategy is to provide a range of products that en enable a diverse range of two-in-ones, whether it's a high-performance convertible with an attached keyboard and a larger screen, or a mobility-oriented detachable with a smaller screen, and everything in between. And our two main product lines for this space are fourth generation core for devices where performance is paramount and bay trail for devices where mobility and mainstream and value price points are required. So we will cover the market. So today I will show you several examples of two-in-one devices and some of the innovative experiences that are being developed for this, this new and growing category. I'll also talk about fourth generation core itself the product that is behind the very best of these two-in-ones. I want to uh, actually start with sharing some market research that we did to assess and discover and build some conviction around how exciting is this two-in-one category. And so we conducted some market research. We did this with hundreds of people. And we brought them into rooms where they were uh, able to play with smartphones, tablets, ultrabooks, two-in-one devices, and at the end of it, tell us which one they wanted most, which is the first one that they would purchase. And amazingly, five times as many people said they would choose the two-in-one uh, versus the ultrabook clamshell. So clearly there was a lot of interest in this category. There was a, a big wow factor. People were very impressed and excited about what they saw, and they, they saw the potential of this category. We then asked them what their second choice would have been, essentially. If that two-in-one two -in wasn't available, what would your next choice be? And almost half of them said a tablet, which tells us that there is a, a big unmet need for a device that brings together what you love about your tablet and what you love about your PC. Essentially, a tablet that has a lot more capabilities than today's tablets. We're not the only ones who believe this. Our OEM partners also believe in the two-in-one vision. And you'll, you'll see proof of that here at IFA and over the next few months as you see more and more designs reaching the market. At the beginning of the year, there were only a handful of two-in-one devices. Most of them were based on third generation core, and they tended to be at higher system price points. By the end of the year, there will be 10 times as many devices on the market. They will be based on third generation core, fourth generation core, bay trail. You'll see convertibles, you'll see detachables, you'll see 10 inch devices, 15 inch devices, and you'll see them at price points ranging from over $1,000 all the way down to $399 US dollars. So there's going to be an incredible range and diversity of new designs reaching the market, many of them which are launching here today and this week here at IFA. I'd like to show you a few of those, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's uh, let's let's show you a few of those right now. Let me start with let me start with uh, a couple of great new designs from Sony. These were announced in just the last 24 hours. Right here, what we have is the the Sony Tap 11. It's a detachable detachable two-in-one ultrabook. It's got a it's. Everything is in the tablet, so the, the CPU and the processor is all in this ultra slim form factor. It's 9.9 .9 millimeters thin. Incredibly thin, incredibly light, 780 grams. 
with a built-in kickstand, and a keyboard that's designed to travel in a very integrated fashion with it. So the keyboard magnetically attaches here. It's got a little charger port to charge the base. Altogether, this is an incredibly thin and light device uh, that is the, the thinnest Intel Core tablet available on the market. Another amazing device from Sony. At first it looks like a very thin notebook. It is, and it's a very thin ultra book. But it's more than that. It actually converts into a very thin and light tablet. And rotates back so that you can put it in stand mode, perfect mode for viewing a movie on, on an airplane. All in this incredibly thin and light package. Fantastic design here from Sony. Lenovo today is going to formally announce a couple of new two-in-ones as well. Um, this is the Yoga 2 Pro. The Lenovo Yoga, the 13-inch Yoga, has been a very successful product today. One of the most popular two-in-ones on the market. This product is the successor to that, the Yoga Pro. It's thinner, it's only 15.5 millimeters thin, it's very light, it has an incredibly high resolution display, it's a 32 by 18 display, and uh, it's a very exciting device. With fourth generation core in it, it's also gonna have much longer battery life. But they didn't stop there. They're taking the yoga concept to their ThinkPad line. Up till now, yoga has, has been in their IdeaPad line exclusively. Now they're bringing it to ThinkPad. So you get an Ultrabook with all the, all the enterprise features, and you get it as a two-in-one. So we're very excited about this from Lenovo. Another example of a detachable. We have here a Toshiba detachable. The lid <coughs> simply detaches, and now you have a tablet. Okay, you're gonna see, these are just a few of the devices that you're gonna see. There are actually a total of 10 Ultrabooks uh, clamshells and two-in-ones launching here at IFA based on fourth generation Intel Core. And you'll see many more roll out over the next few, next few months. Um, we have uh, our Intel developer forum next week where we're going to talk more about Bay Trail and you'll see some of the Bay Trail two-in-ones there. Uh, so it's going to be a very exciting time for the two-in-one space over the next few months. So let's talk about the two-in-one experience a bit more though. Because beyond form factor, uh, it's more than just putting a tablet and a keyboard together. The two-in-one has the capability to really transform the way that we live, work, and play. And so I'd like to show you a couple of examples of what it looks like to trans transition quickly from work to play. So Matt and Gary have joined us up here on stage. Matt's got the Lenovo Yoga 11S. Gary has the Dell XPS, both two-in-one Ultrabooks. And Matt here, we're, we're in a cafe, we're in the Cafe Berlin, and Matt here is working away to finish a Word document that he promised his boss to be done in the next hour. So he needs a keyboard to type, he needs the trackpad in order to use the menus. But as soon as he's done with that, he wants to be able to relax and watch a video. So he's going to do that, he's going to open up the video and he's going to transform the device into tablet mode and he can lean back and enjoy the video. He can even put it into stand mode on the cafe table and sip his latte while he, he watches the movie. Similarly, Gary has, Gary's a photographer. Gary has lots of photos on his device. He's just come back from a trip. He's got several hundred photos that he's downloaded to his Ultrabook. He's been sorting them and organizing them and editing them, all of which he needs a keyboard and a mouse to do effectively, or a trackpad. 
but now he's sorted them, he's organized them, he wants to, to be able to in, enjoy them and view them. So he flips into the tablet mode, the software automatically recognizes this, recognizes this, pulls up the photos in a very easy to scroll mode so that he can just use his finger and scroll through and perhaps show others. Okay, thanks guys. Very simple examples of how a two-in-one device allows you to seamlessly transition between work and play. So now let's look inside the processor in these amazing systems, the fourth generation Intel Core processor. This is the most groundbreaking, revolutionary design that we've done in 10 years since we launched the Centrino platform a decade ago. And in some ways, it's even more profound of a change. Here are three amazing things about fourth generation Core. First of all, it's the greatest improvement in battery life in our history. Even bigger than the battery life improvement that we saw with Centrino. 50% better on active workloads, over 2x better on standby or idle states. It's the first system on a chip for PCs. It's, we've combined everything into a single chip, we've reduced the power so that it enables really sleek and thin and exciting form factors like two-in-ones. And then last but not least, we've dramatically improved the graphics performance of Haswell, especially for ultra-thin form factors. So let's go through these one at a time in a bit more detail. Let's talk about battery life first. We introduced a lot of architectural innovations in the fourth generation platform to dramatically improve battery life without sacrificing performance one bit. We introduced lower power states, we integrated the voltage regulator, the system on a chip architecture helps to reduce power, and we've introduced system level power optimization. And all of these things work in <laughs> harmony to deliver this amazing improvement in battery life. Again, 50% or more on active workloads in 2x or better in idle states. This is important for the user experience because it means you don't have to worry about shutting down or rebooting every time you leave your PC for a few hours or, or days. When you're done working, you simply close the lid, it goes into standby, you come back hours or days later, the system is back up in a flash, and you still have plenty of battery left. To illustrate this, we have a, a time-lapse video that shows a system that's continually watching TV shows, and we'll see how long the battery lasts. Okay, note the clock on the right. <coughs> okay, that was the fastest nine hours ever, right? More than nine hours of uh, continuous playback. So this is truly an active workload. This isn't nine hours where the system's in idle for a good portion of the time. It's nine continuous hours of workload. Absolutely amazing compared to uh, prior generations. Now, those are our measurements. That was done on an Intel reference system in our labs. The 50% and the 2x, that's based on our lab analysis. Let's look at what a couple of OEMs have actually done <laughs> with, with real world implementations of our platforms in shipping products. Let's look at the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air 2013 was launched a couple of months ago, and Gadget went and measured the battery life of that system versus the prior third generation core-based system. And the, the system design is, is largely the same. The same chassis, the, the, um, mostly the same features with some other remarkable improvements. But fundamentally, the, the biggest difference in battery life comes from the Haswell processor itself. And they measured an increase from 6.6 .6 hours to 12.8 hours, almost a 2x increase. So Apple certainly did a lot better than our projections. <clears throat> Others have done well as well. Let's take a look at the Acer S7, for example. This is uh, an Ultrabook that they first delivered with third generation core. In fact, up here on stage, I have two versions of the Acer S7. Behind, I have the 
S7 with third generation core. In front here is the Acer S7 with fourth generation core. These systems are virtually identical in terms of their design, but according to Laptop Magazine, the fourth generation version has almost nine hours of battery life and twice the battery life of the third generation version. Absolutely incredible increase in battery life, enabled in part by Haswell's power efficiency and also in part due to Haswell's physical space efficiency, which allowed for a smaller board and therefore uh, allowed Acer to fit a larger battery into the same design. So 2x increase in battery life. And I think you're going to see a lot more of these types of measurements and, and stories as more and more of these systems launch. Okay, now there's another reason to <laughs> reduce power, and that's to enable sleeker, thinner form factors. OEMs can use smaller heat sinks, they can use smaller fans and vents, ultimately the point from 35 watts to 17 watts. And we did that, and that transition is well underway. But we didn't stop there. At CES in Las Vegas earlier this year, we announced a 7 watt version of the third generation core processor. We recently then took that even further down with fourth generation core down to four and a half watts, which enables even sleeker designs and potentially even some fanless designs. Okay, let's, uh, let's shift gears a bit and talk about graphics. Discrete graphics in, in notebooks are, are popular here in Germany, so I thought it would be particularly important to let you know that we now have an excellent choice with integrated processor graphics in fourth generation core platforms. We've been on a journey for the last few years to dramatically improve the performance of our graphics, and we've now reached the point where we're so proud of our graphics that we've given it for the first time a brand name, Iris and Iris Pro. Our Iris and Iris Pro graphics compete favorably with mainstream graphics cards, and they do so in thin, sleek designs that are difficult, if not impossible, for discrete cards to fit in. This chart here shows our, our journey over the last seven years, where we've increased graphics performance by 75 times. And from third generation to fourth generation, we increased it about 2x. But let me show you what all that improvement means for the consumer. I'd like to bring Simon up. Simon, thanks, you can come on up. To show you what Iris Graphics looks like in a sleek form factor. So the system that Simon's about to show you here, this is the ASUS ZenBook with Iris Graphics. It's the ZenBook form factor that you've come to know and love. Very thin, very sleek. And he is going to show you uh, RID2, a racing game, uh, on this system. Okay. Now, this is in full high definition, 1080p. You can see how brilliant and smooth the action is. You can see the smoke, you can see reflections. You can see the dents he makes in his car as he crashes into walls. Um, fantastic detail, very smooth, uh, enabled by Iris Graphics. Now, he's just unplugged the power, and so he's running this off battery now, and you can see there's no degradation in performance. Okay, thank you, Simon. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> we've been talking about graphics in terms of raw gaming performance, which is critically important. But there's more to life than, than gaming performance when it comes to graphics. Our graphics engine enables a number of amazing capabilities, one of which is our leadership in video transcoding. Well, what's video transcoding? The best way to explain it is to show you what video transcoding can do for you. So I'd like to invite Dave up to stage to show you how video transcoding can help deliver a much better video conferencing experience. Hey, thanks, Adam. Um, so we have two live calls running here. Um, Joanna has joined us somewhere here in Berlin. Um, and I'm going to show you kind of what, what happened before, or kind of current, uh, typical consumer HD video call, and what happens afterwards when we optimize on fourth generation Intel Core. So the one here on stage left is showing kind of a typical call on typical consumer broadband. 
As you can tell, um, it is very dark, very grainy. It's hard to make out the true colors there. Um, a lot of the details of the picture are very hard to read. You can't read the mug in back or the brochure over her left shoulder that well at all. If you look over here on fourth generation Intel Core, what Uvu did was optimize completely onto the architecture. So that includes uh, the graphics details, and what you see as the screen moves slowly over to the left is it's a clear, smooth 720p um, HD experience. And as you talked about earlier, a lot of this is due to not only the, the high quality of the media engine or Intel processor graphics, um, but obviously it's all into a thin two-in-one notebook, so it's got a lot of power efficiency to it as well. Okay, great. And this is all over the same bandwidth? This is all over the same bandwidth, um, typical consumer uh, mainstream bandwidth. Okay, that's just amazing. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. And by the way, I invite, uh, invite you to, after the presentation, to come up and take a closer look in case you couldn't see it very well on the screen. The difference in detail is amazing. Uh, it's it's uh, really, you need to look at it and see how much better the experience is. Again, over the same bandwidth with optimizations delivered by our video transcoding engine. Okay, so I've shown you lots of comparisons of fourth generation core versus third generation to convince you that it's truly a revolutionary product. But in the mind of the consumer, that's actually not the most relevant cons comparison. The most relevant comparison is versus the four-year-old PC that they already own and that they're thinking about replacing and, and refreshing. So let's take a look at what an Ultrabook today looks like versus that four-year-old notebook PC that someone's considering replacing. It's astonishing the difference. The Ultrabook is 50% thinner. It's 50% lighter. It's got a touch screen and a new Windows 8 touch interface. It delivers amazing improvements in graphics performance and in productivity and performance. It's much snappier and more responsive. It starts up in a flash and it's got three times the battery life. And it becomes a platform to enable some of these amazing experiences that you saw from our demo crew and that, that Christian showed earlier with gesture and voice control. Um, the voice control that you'll see when you come up and check it out after the presentation. Okay, so it, it's a really quite an astonishing comparison for those that are ready to buy a, a new PC. When they start looking in the market, they'll see something dramatically different and better than what they currently own. So to, to summarize here, I think there's kind of three things to take away from here. The first of all is, is the fourth generation Intel Core is a truly revolutionary product that delivers a breakthrough in battery life, enables all sorts of exciting new form factors, specifically two-in-ones, and delivers discrete class graphics. It's a new category, it, that two-in-one is a new category that enables you uh, to have what you love about your tablet and your, your notebook PC together in one device. And we and our, our customers and our partners have been working very hard to deliver 10 times the number of those devices that you saw earlier this year. So there's a wave of two-in-ones coming. You'll see, see more of them at IFA and at other uh, venues over the next few months. So enjoy your holiday shopping. Vilan Daka. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, great, uh, great presentation on all the new products for Generation Core. And uh, as you have seen, we have been looking at uh, what are the experiences we need to bring to the users out there. We have worked with the ecosystem, and we have brought the best possible silicon so that from an interface standpoint with the devices to uh, the servers that need to power the big data, to the analytics that we need to bring the best um, uh, data that people can use uh, to make decisions, to the experiences in retail, to the experiences in the consumer, uh, to the business environment. It's a progress that we are making all over the place just to make sure that the experiences are, are better and we also improve big time the connectivity with these great new, great new solutions uh, on, on LTE. So 
with all this, looking forward to bringing those solutions uh, to uh, all uh, the citizens of Earth as, uh, as we have in our vision. So I want to thank you very much for your uh, attention, taking the time to be with us this afternoon. And I want to invite you to our booth and also to the booth of uh, all the uh, ecosystem partners who are working on those great solutions. Thank you very much and enjoy your great evening. Thank you.